People are uh, mentally ill. People's minds are diseased. And their minds torment them. And um, we're going to have a whole series. Uh, next Monday we're doing a de depression talk. So I don't want to get too much into this. But to answer the question is people's minds, like I said, more than 95% of the mind is unconscious, which means unconscious vectors of forces control your life, define you, and do those forces scare you. So you're trying to get away from those, I don't want to say voices because it sounds funny, those thoughts, let's keep it like that, simple first degree for now, and they're haunting you, and you don't understand. And it's, it's totally normal that you don't understand because the realm of the mind is very, it's also an ocean. It's a dark ocean of, very, of, of nuances and subtleties that your modern science has no fucking clue. Like none. You cannot understand the mind because you understand a basic chemical. That's okay. Come on, stop. And those who are studying neurology and are honest, so say we don't, we don't, we, we've barely begun to understand how the brain operates. And the brain is the interface of the mind. So the brain is, in, that means when the brain is dead, mind still is there. We live in mind. Right? So the, the brain is the interface that allows you to, gives, it gives you access to your personal mind. That means your personal web page, if you'd like, which is connected to the World Wide Web. So all of that, for the most part, is shadowy and unconscious. And people are scared of what lives inside of them. And they've also been through generations by society, culture, religions, conditioned to dislike themselves or think that what's that who they and what they are is bad and they shouldn't be this way so that on top of that creates that you're you're scared of yourself and you're traumatized about whatever may live inside of you it could be a little more we can go in much deeper details but you have a sense of that so and all that mental um, noise well, a, there's a war in your own, in your mind. It's you. It's in you. It's in your inner world. There's a war. And every single oscillation or undulation of your mind creates an effect in your physiology. And now your average person doesn't know this, may believe in this, but believing in it doesn't change it. And then to have a level, of, to have a mastery over the mind well, that's a, <laughs> that's a feat that very few people dare to approach or can even succeed at. I believe everybody can. You got to really want to. You got to see what's in it for you. But your average person just wants a quick fix. Listen, listen man, I'm just going to smoke some of that. I'm going to watch some of that. I'm going to listen to some of that. And the pain seems to disappear. And I've resolved my problem from a point of view that's correct. But you haven't solved anything. And it doesn't change. So... That's the thing. Life is really complex. It's deep and it's big in infinite directions, infinitely vertical, infinite, and infinite horizontal. And our modern society, what does it do? It, like, it, it has isolated, atomized humans so that they actually believe that they're an end unto it themselves. They, they live with their little computer and technology and they have everything they need. They don't even understand that they have a relationship with nature. Well, most people, it would be fair to say, and this is just basic, right? Forget understanding your relationship to the past. That means your own parents, your grandparents, your ancestors. Understanding your connection to civilizations for thousands of years. All that is gone. So we have a modern person who's a masturbator who watches porn in front of their laptop, fuck their phone, in their little room with their little posters on the wall and is so disconnected. Has no sense of who they are and where they belong and to what they belong. So where, where's all that data? And so there's clearly something that shields the, the, the individual 
from the grand perspective. And that shield, which can be called a hamkar or ego, or these are big words that mean a lot of things for different people, literally crystallize you, tense you, give you a, a, a sense of identity which is false. And it's, you're so small, you're so stuck in that smallness that all you can is but suffer. That's it. Obviously, there's no space. There's no space for you. We're not even talking about deep stuff. There's no space for your own thoughts. There's no space for your own desires. There's no space for your own, the energies that are in you. There's no space for anything that's even primal, meaning basic in nature. There's no, there's no space. So what does that mean? That means there's pressure, which means you're going to suffer. So uh, I think this is a humble attempt to, to answer your question. We can, of course, unpack this for hours.